Okay, good morning. So, this is a course uh, on quantum electronics. Uh, the course contents are uh, given here, as you can see. So, we will start with some basic optics, uh, looking at uh, plane waves and a uh, little bit of diffraction, polarization, and uh, discuss in a bit more detail anisotropic media. The second part actually is looking at nonlinear optical effects. You are all familiar with linear optical effects, uh, but this will introduce uh, the nonlinearity in the system. And we will primarily study things like uh, second harmonic generation, sum and difference frequency generation, parametric amplification, etc. So, there are processes in which you can uh, send light at a particular wavelength inside a crystal, and the light coming out has a different frequency, double the frequency, for example. So, second harmonic generation, you can also come out with light with a lower frequency, which is called parametric uh, down conversion. So, you send in uh, blue light, you come out with red light at the output, or you send in red light and come out with blue light at the output. So, these are nonlinear processes and uh, they find a lot of applications today. And to achieve this, uh, we need to discuss something about uh, periodically poled materials and so on, which is given here. So, all this comes under a class of second order nonlinear effects. We will also discuss uh, briefly third order effects of self phase modulation, cross phase modulation, and four way mixing. So, till, then, till this point, we will be uh, primarily looking at classical aspects. The second part is actually looking at the quantum aspects of light. So, we will start with quantization of electromagnetic field and look at some. Um, the concept of photons, which arrives from there. Look at states of light, which are called coherent states, squeeze states, and some of their properties. We look at some interesting uh, devices like beam splitter. Beam splitter is a very simple device, but uh, in quantum, it is a very, very interesting uh, properties it has, and how it is used in interferometers. Uh, there is a process called spontaneous parametric down conversion, which is a very important process which is used today in uh, many of the quantum uh, applications of light. And there are states like what squeeze states in which the, uh, the noise in the light is much lower than what you can achieve normally with a laser. And of course, there are some uh, very interesting entangled states of light. So, what I will assume uh, in the course is uh, you have a background in electromagnetism, you have done Maxwell's equations, waves, etc. We will really briefly review at the beginning. And I would assume that you have the enough mathematical background, Fourier transforms, etc., etc. And uh, also you have done some quantum mechanics course, some basic quantum mechanics, uh, because I will not uh, Maybe I will recall some basic some basic aspects of quantum mechanics uh, when we start the quantum aspects, but I would as assume that you have uh, done a course in quantum mechanics sometime. And if not, you would have to put in some extra effort to, to get uh, the background that is necessary for the course. Okay, so as I said here, there will be a quiz every week. Uh, and uh, maybe at the end of the semester, we will have some assignments term papers or assignments uh, as we go through the semester. And uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, as I've written here, if you have any difficulty at any time, you're most welcome to contact me. Okay. So, today let's start with some uh, basic uh, optics. What is the plane wave? What is the meaning of a plane wave? Yeah, anyone? What is plane in a plane wave? Yeah, the wavefront is a plane. Is is plane? So first of all, okay. Let me start with uh, writing the Maxwell's equations. So can you can one of you tell me the Maxwell's equations in uh, media? What is the first equation? Divergence d is equal to rho f, where rho f is the free charge density. Divergence b is equal to zero. Curl E is equal to minus del B by del T. 
and curl H is equal to J F plus del D by del T. <coughs> and how do you define D? D is defined as epsilon 0 E plus P and uh, we will in the, throughout the course we will assume the media to be non-magnetic. So, we will assume B is equal to mu naught H. So, we will assume mu is equal to mu naught for all media. Now, rho f is the free charge density. So, again in the course we will not have any free charges anywhere. So, rho f will be assumed to be 0 and no free currents. J f is also equal to 0. So, primarily we will uh, have the four equations as follows. So, divergence d is equal to 0, divergence b is equal to 0, curl e is minus del b by del t and curl h is equal to del d by del t with d is equal to epsilon 0 e plus p. Okay, so, normally you write this p in terms of e as epsilon 0 chi e and so you write d as epsilon 0 into 1 plus chi into e which is written as epsilon e. Chi is the electric susceptibility and epsilon is the permittivity of the medium, epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space. Now, if chi or epsilon is independent of position, that means it does not depend on x, y, z, the medium is called homogeneous. If this when I write this equation p is equal to epsilon 0 chi e, I am assuming that the polarization is proportional to electric vector, electric field. So, that means it is a linear medium. The relationship between p and e is linear, so it is called a linear medium. And if I assume chi to be a scalar quantity, this equation tells me p and e are parallel to each other. And so, D and E are also parallel to each other and that is an isotropic medium. So, this equation when I write this equation I assume the medium to be linear. If chi is independent of x, y, z it is homogeneous and if chi is a scalar it is an isotropic medium. So, this equation here when you normally write D is equal to epsilon E with epsilon independent of position and uh, epsilon uh, is a scalar, it corresponds to linear homogeneous isotropic medium. In the, in the course that we do here, we will assume homogeneity, we will not look at non inhomogeneous media, but we will uh, come out of this restrictions on linearity and isotropy. So, we will first look at anisotropic media in which D and E may not be parallel and once we understand those properties, we will go into a system where this equation will have to be modified. P is no more proportional to E, you can have higher order contributions coming from uh, higher, ex uh, higher expressions in E vector. So, before we move on to that, let me just really very close quickly recall basic electromagnetism in terms of plane waves and uh, what are the properties of plane waves. Okay, so, first is let me take an electric vector of this form E is equal to E 0 uh, exponential i k dot r minus omega t. That is an electric vector. This is a propagating wave because it has expressions of the form k dot r minus omega t. 
how do I check whether this is a plane wave? This component represents the phase of the wave. So surface of constant phase at any time will be k dot r is equal to constant. This means kx x plus kyy plus kzz is equal to constant. And that is an equation of a plane. Ax plus by plus cz is equal to constant is an equation of a plane. And this plane, the, the, the orientation of the plane is perpendicular to the vector defined by kx, k by kz. If you go back and look at geometry, you will see that this is an equation of a plane and that plane is perpendicular to the vector whose components are kx, k y and kz. So, this is a plane wave front, plane, plane wave because the wave front or the surface of constant phase is a plane and the surface of constant phase is perpendicular to the k vector. K vector represents the direction of propagation of the wave, the direction of propagation of the face front of the wave. So, the face, the, the, the face front may be like this. So, it is pro, it's propagating, it is a plane wave front, it is going like this. So, this direction, the k vector direction is like this and that is the face front. So, k vector is like this and the corresponding electric field is given by this equation which I have written here. Also, by, by writing exponential minus i omega t, I have, I am saying that the wave is a monochromatic wave because this wave has this form for all times. So, there is only one frequency present. If I take a time dependence in this E0 vector or if I take a phase which is time dependent inside the exponential, the wave will no more be monochromatic. Or if I say that this is the electric field from t is equal to 0 to capital T, I restrict the, the length of the wave train, the wave is no more monochromatic. So, this expression represents a monochromatic wave, a plane wave propagating along the k vector direction. Can I have an arbitrary E0 vector direction? Please note that this electric field has to satisfy all the Maxwell's equations. So, let me look at the first equation. Now, so divergence d is equal to 0. Now, we are assuming a linear homogeneous isotropic medium. So, d is equal to epsilon e, where epsilon is a constant. So, this implies that divergence e is equal to 0. So, epsilon is a scalar constant. So, when you take a divergence of d vector, you get divergence e is equal to 0. So, this means that del dot e 0 vector e to the power i k x x plus k y y plus k z z minus omega t is equal to 0. Now, I will leave it to you to expand this E 0 is a constant, but there is an x dependence in the exponential factors. So, if you expand this, you can show that this equation implies ok. So, this, this divergence has i cap del by del x plus j cap del by del y plus k cap del by del z. So, you expand this inside. So, there are x, y, z components of this vector here. You take the divergence and you can show that this implies k dot e naught equal to 0. So, this is nothing but saying that electromagnetic waves are transverse because k vector direction represents the direction of propagation of the wave and e 0 vector has to be perpendicular to k vector. So, this is this, this, this implies that the uh, electric vector is always perpendicular to the k vector direction in a plane wave. Okay. Uh, 
Now, there are two independent directions for any given direction of propagation. If the k vector is like this, so the electric vector E0 vector has to be in this plane. So, I can have two independent orientations. So, if this orientation is like this or like this, there are two perpendicular orientations which are independent of each other. So, I will define two independent polarization states of light. For every propagation direction defined by k vector, there can be two different directions of E0 vectors which are independent and both perpendicular to k vector. For example, if I choose a propagation along z direction, suppose k vector is like this, this is x, y, I can have electric vector. So, E0 vector could be like this or E0 vector could be like this. So, this is E01, E02 and these are two independent directions of E0 vector both corresponding to wave propagating along a direction which I have called as z. So, if I have for example, if I write E is equal to x cap E01 e to the power i. Now, what happens to k dot r minus omega t? So, remember k vector becomes z cap k because k vector is along this z direction. My choice of z direction is along the k vector direction. So, k dot r becomes simply k times z. So, this is kz minus omega t. So, what is this? Uh, these are planes now kz is a constant is a plane parallel to the xy plane. So, these are plane waves. So, the planes the planes of the wave, wave front are like this. So, it is propagating like this in the z direction uh, the face front is perpendicular to the z direction. I can have another one. So, E2 vector for example is y cap E02 e to the power i kz minus omega t. And these are two independent polarization states. These are two independent polarization states, one along the x cap direction, one along the y cap direction. And you give me any polarization state which is which has this electric vector in the xy plane, I can write it as a superposition of x cap and y cap components. So, this is one basis set. I can use these two linearly polarized states of light as a basis to describe any state of polarization. Uh, of a light wave propagating along the z direction. Now, what should be the direction of the magnetic field of this of this uh, of this uh, electric field? So, if I take this electric vector e is e is equal to e zero exponential i k dot r minus omega t, I can use another Maxwell's equation and find out the direction of the magnetic field. So, for example, if I take this equation del cross e is equal to minus del b by del t. Now, <coughs> the magnetic field can also be written as V0 vector exponential i k dot r minus omega t. It has the same phase distribution as the electric field and its magnitude is V0 vector, magnitude and direction are defined by the V0 vector. So, if I substitute into this equation again you can use this uh, electric field substitute into this curl on the left hand side and this magnetic field on the right hand side what you can show is so ok. Now, let me tell you for this kind of an expression just like I showed you divergence means simply k dot curl would imply k cross. So, I leave this to you again substitute the electric field vector calculate the curl of that vector and you can show this implies i k cross e is equal to i omega times b or b is equal to 1 by omega k cross e. <coughs> so, this is just a review of the electromagnetics that you must have done uh, some time back. So, that is the relationship between the magnetic field and the electric field. So, this, this equation told me 
this actually e0 vector is e vector. So, this also tells me k dot e is equal to 0. So, the electric field of this wave is perpendicular to the k vector direction. The magnetic field is perpendicular to k vector and e vector. k cross e is perpendicular to k and e and so b is perpendicular to k as well as e. So, if I if I for example, if my if I choose my k vector like this e is here, b will be here. e, b and k form a right handed coordinate system. Both e and b are perpendicular to k vector, e and b are perpendicular to each other with e, b and k forming a right handed coordinate system. So, this in, uh, in plane electromagnetic waves k vector is always perpendicular to e vector and b vector. Please note that we are discussing right now isotropic media. In anisotropic media things will change. So, in media like glass or air or water the direction of electric vector and magnetic vector are both perpendicular to k vector and e and b are perpendicular to each other. Now, what defines the direction of propagation of energy? What vector? The pointing vector. Okay. So, pointing vector is given by E cross H. And in this case, because we are assuming mu is equal to mu naught and uh, it is a scalar, B and H have the same direction. So, this is also di the direction of H and this is also the direction of E, D vector, because D is equal to epsilon E and epsilon is a scalar. So, D and E are parallel, B and H are parallel, E, B and K form a right handed coordinate system. And so, S vector is also like this, E cross H is also in the same direction as K vector. So, the wave front, the wave front propagates like this, the energy also propagates like this. Why I am telling you this is because in anisotropic media this does not happen. I will show you that k and s are not parallel to each other. So, the wave front is propagating in one direction, but the energy is propagating in a slightly different direction. Now, E, B and k here are forming a right handed coordinate system. So, these media are called right handed media. There is a lot of work going on these days in a medium called metamaterial or a negative refractive index medium or left handed medium in which E, B and K form a left handed coordinate system. The properties of that medium are different from the properties of these media. So, we will not touch upon that in the course, but this is just to tell you that in normal media that we are looking at E, B and K are uh, at right angles to each other and form a right handed coordinate system. Okay. Now, I can actually calculate what is called as the intensity of the wave, how much of the energy that the wave is, uh, is uh, carrying per unit time. So, this is defined as the time average of the pointing vector. So, intensity is defined as the time average of the pointing vector. Now, let me recall, please note the here that uh, let me come back to this equation and, uh, and emphasize one more point. We are writing a complex equation, but electric fields are always real, magnetic fields are always real. Why am I using a complex equation? It is mathematically much easier to work with, but then finally, I must remember that all quantities are real. So, I have to take the real part of electric vector real part of magnetic field vector etcetera. But remember that the sum of the real parts of two numbers is equal to the real part of the sum of the two complex numbers, but the real part of the product of two complex numbers is not equal to the product of the real parts of the complex numbers. So, whenever operations like products between complex numbers or uh, squaring these are called nonlinear operations a plus b whole square is not equal to a square plus b square. 
The squaring is not a, not a linear operation. So whenever you have a nonlinear operation, I have to be careful. I should not use this equation like this. I have to always use real fields. So either I use like this plus its complex conjugate, which is what we will do to make the comp quantity always real, or I must use cosine or sine functions. So when you, uh, if you recall your electromagnetics, if I actually start with uh, cosine forms of the electric vector, then I can have to calculate E vector real part, real, real fields, H vector real fields, calculate E cross H, the pointing vector, which will be time dependent because E will be of the form of cos kx, kz minus omega t, h will be cos kz minus omega t. So E cross h will be cos square kz minus omega t. But intensity is the time average, the energy crossing per unit area, per unit time, perpendicular to the propagation direction. So when I take a time average, the cos square factor will give you a, a factor of half. Now, in when I start to use complex notation for electric vector, I have to write, I, what I get equivalent is that this will be half of real part of E cross H star. Taking time average with real electric fields and real magnetic fields is the same as taking the real part of E cross H star with a factor of half outside. So you can, maybe you have done in the course, if you have not done, please take a cosine form of this calculate assuming real fields E cross H, take a time average, assume complex fields, calculate H, then calculate this and you will find the same thing. Okay, so let me calculate this for this, uh, uh, for the uh, electric and magnetic fields we have got. So this is equal to, uh, okay, so this is a vector E cross H star gives me a vector which is the direction of propagation which we know it is K vector direction because E, H and K form a right handed system here. E, so E cross H will be along the K vector direction. So that is the direction of energy flow. So let me substitute this here. So half of real part of, so E is uh, E naught E to the power I K dot R minus omega T cross H star. Now H we have calculated B here. So this is uh, uh, 1 by omega mu 0 k cross, uh, let me keep this E, okay. So let me, let me write this as half of uh, E star this is, half of real part of E cross k cross E star and there is 1 by omega mu 0 comes out. Remember this is H star, so if I use this equation, this is B star becomes uh, 1 by omega K cross E star and uh, so what is this quantity here? E cross K cross E star, A cross B cross C, can you expand this and tell me? So this is E dot E star, so this is real part of modulus E square into K minus 0 and mod E square is anyway real. So this is simply K um, vector by 2 omega mu 0 into mod E square. Uh, is actually mod E square is mod E0 square and E0 is the electric, uh, the amplitude of the electric field here. So actually the, the this, this intensity has this vector here simply because uh, I am using A cross H star here. So this I can write this as K by 2 omega mu 0 mod E0 square into K unit vector. this vector simply implies that the energy is flowing along the direction of k vector and uh, the magnitude is simply k by 2 omega mu 0 mod e square. Many times we will write this in a slightly different form. 
So, let me forget about the vector here. So, this is k by 2 omega mu 0 mod e naught square. Now, how is k related to omega? k is equal to omega by the velocity of the wave. So, if there is a medium, there is a refractive index. Okay? So, this intensity becomes simply uh, n by 2 c mu 0 mod e naught square. Now, you know that c, c square is 1 by epsilon 0 mu 0. So, you can also write this as n c epsilon 0 by 2 mod e naught square. You just um, write c epsilon 0 is 1 by c mu 0, then you get n epsilon 0 by 2 mod e 0 square. So, these are all interchangeable forms uh, of the intensity. It depends on the refractive index of the medium because the velocity of light velocity of the electromagnetic wave depends on the refractive index and it depends on the peak electric field intensity. So, that is the energy crossing per unit time per unit area and uh, this is an expression which we will frequently use later on when we look at uh, all the nonlinear effects because we need to calculate how much of light which I shine gets converted to the new frequency. Okay, now, Yeah, the intensity is simply depends on the electric field. The question is, if I launch an uh, electric field with a certain frequency, the frequency, I get new waves at new frequencies, which will have their own electric fields. So, I can calculate the intensity of that wave of the new frequency using the same expression for the electric field of that wave. So, if I have a medium and if I launch omega frequency, it has a certain intensity. So, as the wave propagates, it will generate a 2 omega frequency, which means it will generate electric fields at 2 omega. So, that electric field will define what is the intensity of the wave at 2 omega frequency. All this remains the same, the electric field, because these are essentially the, the change that will happen is how is P related to E. This equation, which we wrote earlier, will get modified this equation and this equation will com get completely modified because p is no more proportional to e. So, if I launch an electric field, uh, a certain wave with a certain electric field, what is polarization? Polarization is the dipole moment per unit volume. So, when I launch an electric field, uh, when I launch a wave with a certain electric field, the polarization is not proportional to e vector and as I will show you, there will be components of polarization at new frequencies. And because polarization represents dipole moment per unit volume, that means the dipoles are oscillating at new frequencies, which means they will radiate new frequencies. And I will see those frequencies coming out if I satisfy certain conditions. Okay, so, that will become clear. So, this equation is going to change in anisotropic media, sorry, in uh, nonlinear media, but uh, the equations for intensity, the pointing vector, everything remains the same. Because actually, nonlinear medium is uh, the, the the light which enters interacts with the medium and generates new electric fields. Normally, uh, in linear media, the light interacts with the medium and generates the same frequencies. It doesn't generate new frequencies. So, whatever light you have put in frequency, that is the same frequency which comes out gets scattered in different directions for example, or uh, gets attenuated, gets amplified, etcetera, etcetera. But in nonlinear uh, nonlinear non effects, you will generate new frequencies with new electric fields and new magnetic fields. Okay? <clears throat> okay, now, let me look at this equation again. This equation, I have assumed this vector and E0 need not necessarily be real. For example, let me look at a wave like this. So, let me assume my E 0 vector is x cap plus i y cap into some E 0. 
And because I'm choosing my E0 vector in the xy plane, I choose the k vector along this z direction. So let me write this electric field E is equal to E0 times x cap plus i y cap e to the power i k z minus omega t. Propagation direction is z and the electric vector has x and y components. What a wave, what is this wave? So let me try to analyze this wave. Okay, this is be circularly polarized wave. So how do I get this? So let me look at the real part of this. The real part of this vector will be E0 x cap into cosine kz minus omega t. And what will be the real part of the second term? Minus, yes, minus sine kz minus omega t. Because this will be cosine kz minus omega t plus i sine kz minus omega t. So with this i, I get a minus sign here. So let me look at a point which I call z is equal to 0. So at z is equal to 0, the e vector varies with time as e0 x cap cos omega t plus e0 y cap sin omega t. I choose a plane which I call z is equal to 0 and I monitor the electric field as a function of time on that plane. The electric field of the wave on that plane will vary as this expression shows. So let me write, let me try to draw a figure and see what this implies. This is x, this is y. So z is towards me. So at t is equal to 0, what is the direction of the electric field? Y cap component is 0, is x cap, so it is like this. This is at t is equal to 0. At a slightly later time, this will decrease from 1. So x, comp, x cap component will decrease and y cap component will increase and will be positive. So this will be at t is equal to delta t. So the electric vector has moved like this. And you can analyze this, this will keep rotating as a function of time. And the direction of rotation corresponds to 800 screw because z, di z direction is like this. If I rotate the screw in this direction, it will unscrew towards me. So to, for, the, for a rotation like this and movement like this, this corresponds to 800 screw direction and this is called a right circularly polarized because circularly polarized because the length of this electric vector will always be E0 square. It will not change with time. And it is right circular because the direction of rotation of the electric field, ve electric vector, corresponds to a right handed screw. So, you can write, for example, if you take uh, an expression in which uh, E0 vector is x cap minus i y cap E0. This will correspond to a left circularly polarized wave. So, what is the uh, what is making it circularly polarized? It's simply because the the two components, x cap and y cap components, are being added with a pi, phase, pi by two phase difference. This i corresponds to a phase change of pi by two. E to the power i pi by two is is i. So i means exponential i pi by 2, which means a pi by 2 phase difference between x cap and y cap components, which you can see here. One is cos omega t, the other is sin omega t. So in this, uh, you can actually show that these are two orthogonally polarized states of polarization. A right circular polarization and a left circular polarization are orthogonal in the, in the sense that uh, they are independent polarization states. And you can write any polarization state as a linear combination of a right circular and a left circular. Just like you could write any, com any polarization as a linear combination of an x cap component 
and a Wyckoff component, which means you can write any polarization as a superposition of two linearly polarized light waves. You can write any polarization also as a superposition of any two circularly polarized light waves, one right circular, one left circular. These are like basis sets. I can use vertically and horizontally polarized as, as a basis set. I can use, uh, I can use uh, these two as basis sets. I can use these two as basis sets. I can use any basis set. I can use this and this as basis set. In fact, I can gen generalize this even further and I can write E0 vector as uh, uh, say x cap plus i beta y cap. The components may not be equal. I can add with unequal amplitude the x cap and y cap components and I will get elliptically polarized light. You can show that if you look at the same diagram again, you can see that the, the electric vector is rotating, but the, the length of the electric vector also changes with time. That is called an elliptically polarized light and that is the most general polarization state for uh, light. A linear polarization, circular polarization are special cases of an elliptically polarized light. So, in fact, you can use a right elliptical and a left elliptical as two bases for writing any polarization state. So, in fact, for example, uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to say like this, suppose I, I, I make a column matrix, so E x and E y components. Okay? So, the linear basis corresponds to the two independent vectors 0 1 1 0 and 0 1. The other one corresponds to 1 i and 1 minus i with of course, you have to normalize this I have to put a 1 by root 2 here. It is writing a, a, a column vector with two elements as a linear combination of these two or these two in fact, any finite number of basis sets. So, this is nothing but stating that uh, I can use linearly polarized states as basis sets or circularly polarized states as basis sets and which basis set will I use depends on the problem. We will find in anisotropic media the basis set that we will use is the linear polarization states because uh, what we will find is what are called as Eigen modes of propagation are linearly polarized states. You have effects where you should use circularly polarized basis set. Uh, I do not know whether you have heard of Faraday effect. Uh, if you take a material and apply a magnetic field, suppose the magnetic field is applied in this direction and you launch a light wave polarized like this, as it propagates it rotates this polarization state. It is like an optical rotation. So, light polarized vertically as it propagates through it rotates in the presence of the magnetic field and this is called Faraday effect. Michael Faraday discovered this and to analyze this problem, it is better to use this basis set, circular, right circular and left circular basis sets. So, the basis sets will depend on uh, the problem at hand and in the, uh, in the anisotropic media we will discuss, we will all be using this uh, vertically and uh, horizontally polarized or linearly polarized states as the uh, basis sets for, uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the course. So, I think with that we uh, finish today's course. So, what I will start uh, in the next class is essentially uh, we will uh, recall a bit of uh, diffraction. Uh, I do not, I will not go into much detail and then we will start anisotropic media. We will discuss anisotropic media and I do not know whether, have you studied anisotropic media in, the, in any course before? In detail? No, ok, ok. Yeah, it involves tensors, but it does not, uh, I mean it is application of tensors to studying light propagation. Ok, any questions? Yeah. No, no, no. In vacuum, uh, the uh, polarization state does not change at all. You can, you can launch any polarization state, it propagates without any change. Yeah. So, you were talking about left wing system. Yeah. In terms of which properties will determine which decide whether it is the right wing system or the left wing system. Okay. See, uh, what will happen is in uh, there are media in which epsilon and mu are both negative. Metals have a negative epsilon. 
So there are people who now make media which are microstructured media in which both epsilon and mu are negative, which means that uh, D and E are anti-parallel and B and H are also anti-parallel. And in this case, you can show that S vector and K vector are opposite to each other. So the wave front is going like this, but the energy is going backwards. So these are called backward propagating waves and these exist in waveguides and many other phenomena. But this is now being analyzed for bulk media in which you can generate, you can make an artificial medium with uh, negative, which, which has negative uh, epsilon negative mu at a certain frequency, okay. 